here on the Independent Investor Channel for an update on Highly on Holdings at all-time lows. I'm accumulating quite a, a new share position here as the legacy shares have already turned long-term quite a, a, a long time ago, um, but establishing really <clears throat> a supplemental position here in the company that uh, is being priced for absolute liquidation. Uh, it's being priced as a, as a company that will fail. It's being priced as a company that will not make sales. It will be a company that is being priced to walk the same road as the Dodo, uh, i.e. Nikola. Um, the performance as put forward by my friend at Silent, Silent Alert on YouTube, you're going to want to check him out. He's doing a good job of, of foot stomping some information um, entrepreneurship and leadership. My buddy, Robert Boy, uh, he is also uh, putting um, some really good content out there. Um, he's um, just recently been uh, put in in my community as well. So I want to give a, a shout out and a foot stomp to, to him, as well as some of the other uh, content creators that I've I've seen on, on YouTube. One of the most touching pieces of, of content um, this this week actually came by way of a brand new channel um, and just putting out some phenomenal content. Um, he's got about 250 subscribers, I guess. It just started out on YouTube, but we're going to continually help those those guys build their message. I shared to Twitter uh, that offering, which is uh, pretty touching in understanding that uh, when I say shareholder value, it goes beyond just a number. And it goes beyond just um, a a a, um, a consensus of a group that has just entered into a stock blindly as a retail community and 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 are hoping for things over the moon and um, all of those stereotypes that are bestowed upon uh, retail investors. I get a different sense. I get a different sense every time I go into the Discord group um, that supports Hylion. I get a different sense from. Um, the management when they talk about highly on and the, it's a far cry from a stock market now that is pricing this company for complete and utter liquidation. Um, what do we do currently? I think we're working with two opposing forces right now. We are dealing with a current perception and we are dealing with a potential future reality. Okay. <clears throat> Your loyalty will lie somewhere on either side of those two uh, fences. And it has never been so easy uh, to be a short seller in the company. You have been proven right for the last three years. Um, and, 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 and those efforts to continue raping the stock, um, raping the stock for the sheer intent of making profit will continue um, as long as the company is uh, being um, um, credited uh, with... Uh, no credit at all. Um, company is being absolutely put here. And I have some notes here. The correlation I talked about with Nickel and Hylion, both down 7% for the week. Silent Alert put that out. That's not my evaluation. That is his. I'm paying it forward through the message here. Um, the stock market in its current environment. Um, I am carefully looking at the landscape and asking the question, are we missing something? with this particular offering. Now, I will just give you the honest answer here in that there is a potential for a big miss here, okay? Hylion has lovely potential, potential with regard to a, a new company that is um, garnering fairly light uh, quarter over quarter revenue now, is in a very, very dangerous position. One that, through my bullish thesis, believes that they will weather and come out ahead. With that, they have uh, navigated uh, horrible financial conditions when it comes to a, a small and micro-cap market that is historically as low as they've ever been, comparatively speaking, to the large-cap market. We are in that time now. Um, call it luck, uh, call it bad uh, bad fortune, call it misfortune in all of, all of our um, going ahead and entering into a stock uh, post-euphoric SPAC craze. 
uh, and being uh, subjected to a downturn of epic proportions. It's been absolutely horrendous. It's been it's been terrible through the lens of just looking at the stock. Um, the the irony for me and what I am charged to continually share to a YouTube audience that um, I am charged to provide as insightful of information as I possibly can is to compare and contrast the current perception that the company will not make it based on a number of different criteria and the sheer reality in only just a few short months of of potential catalyst going into the back half of 2023 and in accordance with what the company has provided us in way of uh, dialogue and understanding the roadmap toward commercialization. Now, the contrast between what Mr. Healy talks about on his addresses to uh, to share owners during the quarterly calls, uh, the stock market is discrediting as if he's a liar. Um, I am not in that camp. I don't believe that Mr. Healy is a liar. Uh, I believe that everything that he talks about um, demonstrates conviction and bullish uh, direction in its uh, ability to uh, collaborate uh, and leverage those collaborative efforts with the industry could could highly undo it on their own. No, no, they couldn't. And if we we don't have to look very far uh, in the same similar space to understand a company uh, that uh, tried to do it all and is now failing and is looking like it will probably succumb to bankruptcy here shortly as the newest proposal from Nikola Motors is to actually double the share float to 1.6 billion shares, I believe, which is the maximum number of shares authorized in accordance with their current charter. Uh, I, I think that that's uh, unfortunately hurting. These two have always been attached to the hip. I don't quite understand it because they are significantly different in their approach, their 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 thesis, their um, and how they operate in how they're building their team and how they've went through, um, you know, cycling through their board of directors and even their uh, upper management, um, and, and also not. Uh, succumbing to the uh, the criminal prosecutions that have uh, bestowed upon uh, Trevor Milton and the Nicola story as it's involved to to today. Um, do I believe the scrutiny on Nicola is uh, is justified at this particular juncture? Again, if I'm going to be in all fairness, I'm not really sure if it's in an our best interest as a as a as a uh, uh, not only a country, um, but as a world to stymie technology in the way that we have. A and again, um, right now we are uh, silently sitting on the sideline um, watching the rapists, and that's what they are. Uh, short sellers are rapists. They are rapists, nothing short. Raping a stock um, uh, relentlessly with no acknowledgement to uh, or any interest whatsoever in seeing a company uh, succeed. Um, that is the current environment we we live in in 2023 in the stock market. Um, the Sleeping and Exchange Commission does nothing uh, whatsoever uh, to ensure that proper vetting is, is occurring. Um, that was fortified uh, for me uh, when Bernie Madoff himself actually went to the SEC and actually uh, admitted that he was the one that was running one of the largest, if not the largest, Ponzi schemes ever recorded in the history of Ponzi schemes, and the SEC did nothing about it. Um, and, and, and it creates an imperfect environment. It creates an imperfect stock market where the SEC would be quick to uh, vow their allegiance to um, in, in investors, both institutional and retail. Um, the investor is left on their own to uh, determine what thesis, uh, what uh, material rapings uh, they are willing to incur uh, for as long as those rapists want to continue to um, rape those companies like Nikola, who I believe has phenomenal technology to bring to bear, and companies like Hylion, who are trying to work through 
um, the approval process and the bureaucracy that exists between bringing new technology to bear that can actually help augment a, a global crisis that we can all agree to, to a low degree or a high degree um, needs to be uh, tackled head on in uh, turning out these technologies um, and, and looking for alternative forms of, of energy uh, as opposed to us continuing to buy into uh, what has traditionally worked in the oil and gas industry um, and powering our machinery with, with diesel. There are different ways of going about um, powering. And I think it has been brought to my attention just this week that this technology is not novel. It's not. Um, they've been doing using it in locomotives uh, for for many, many decades, and they've been using it on the vessels, um, an industry that I am intimately familiar with to uh, propel, um, propel uh, uh, plants uh, along the line by creating energy and using that energy in the way that uh, they want that stored energy be energy to be used. Um, Hylion is no different. The idea is not, um, not novel. It's novel in the sense that uh, this was the first time that it, in, it had been introduced to the class eight space. And I think we really need to look at the hard reality and everything that I see is evolving toward a renewable natural gas future in some capacity. Now, for those people that suggest that uh, RNG is not going to find its place and therefore we can't look at an opportunity like Hylion, I think you're missing the facts. I think you're missing the facts and understanding that hydrogen will have its place in the future. I believe that electricity and battery technology as it improves will have its place in the future. But if you're going to suggest to me that with the movement in renewable natural gas and the already existing footprint in compressed natural gas, albeit small, but still present in class eight trucking is not going to have its place into the future you 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 and me would just have a, a disagreement with regard to what we see in how the future of uh, transportation is going to unfold and where RNG and CNG is going to have its place uh, in that future. Okay. So when we look to compare and contrast the current reality in the stock market, I think it's fair to suggest, and this is across the board, I am seeing re-ratings in companies over the last couple of years, to be honest with you. Uh, Hylion has been subject to that victimization as part of a grander whole. And I don't think that the fragmented positives that we all enjoy and have celebrated along the evolution of Hylion Holdings as a young company pre-commercial state is enough to have moved the needle. And that is indicative of a stock price now that has continued to fall and continue to, to be recessed. Um, if I was going to offer any of my constructive criticism, it seems that Thomas Healy and team are completely happy with watching the stock price go down. I mean, we have 156 and change, maybe potentially uh, fun pellets to throw at this project, and then we'll be at zero. Um, and and I, I I think perhaps maybe the same level of tact and approach um, that is being demonstrated now would probably happen at that juncture as well, um, because there are options for companies that go to zero. Um, either you just re, uh, uh, re split the stock and reverse split the stock, and then we're all going to be sitting on, um, you know, instead of 20,000 shares, we'll all be sitting on 200 shares of a company that's worth $30. Um that is an option. Uh, another option is to uh, raise capital uh, to supplement what is perceived to be a, a weak stock position. Now, in defense of Thomas Healy, where I'm quick to criticize on one side of the coin to suggest that right now, um, this silence on the line that they've demonstrated within the investing and public arena is unacceptable as far as my particular juncture. I know people disagree with me on this and they would suggest that the silence is completely normal and that I have no business uh, questioning uh, whether or not Thomas Healy needs to be focused on hyping the train. Look, my friends, there is a difference between a hype train and silence on the line. Okay. I do more for Hylion. 
in a week's time than Hylion does for themselves as far as being forward with the information that they need to be putting out there. Their advocacy for RNG only goes so far. And as far as the stock market, their advocacy and uh, political movement toward RNG falls on complete deaf ears when we continually see the stock price slide into oblivion. And that's where we're headed. We're heading into oblivion and I'll calmly slide into oblivion with BlackRock and Thomas Healy, you know, part of me um, wants to suggest that if Thomas Healy is immune to this continued stock uh, recessment, then I will continue to be immune to it because where he's losing millions and millions of dollars on his own stock, because he feels like the best way to approach the public right now is to be silent on the line. Whereas a, a more robust, you can't find any type of social media where you don't find Elon Musk in the public limelight every single day. And I think a daily upload in way of a news release or a progress report by this investor relations team um, would be at, at present too much to ask, whereas I feel like it's not too much to ask at all. In other words, I would ask the scary question, what is internal relations doing with Hylion? It seems to me that they're sitting on their fat asses and not doing anything and continually and calmly watching the stock sink into oblivion. And I will calmly sink into oblivion with them because here's the thing. I've made a decision to enter into this company. I was excited about the prospects uh, of and the vision of where this company could end up. None of that has changed. Now, how we end up at that end is going to be up to Hylion. It's not going to be up to me. I do what I can every single week to come on, talk to an audience that is hurting just like me or is investing in a, a, a next generation opportunity like what was uh, expressed this week uh, on YouTube. And th those efforts, I like to put focus where the effort deserves to be. And I, I, I don't think that in comparison, and I'll share with you some of the comparison, I watched an interview just this week on a company that I cover. And I, I joked in the Discord group about six months ago, I said, where will uh, Aduro Clean Technologies and Hylion end up the year? And at the time, Aduro was trading at like 63 cents, okay? And at the time, Hylion Holdings was on its upswing. It was trading for $3 and $3 and 75 cents at the time. And I said, let's race. Let's have a horse race here and we'll see what perspective actually works. Okay. Now, well, Aduro has increased to just over 70 cents since then, Hylion has given up pretty close to 50% of its value since that uh, horse race was posed by myself to suggest that Aduro Clean Technologies, a $40 million market cap company, actually stands to close the year higher than Hylion Holdings that is on a slippery slope right now that Thomas Healy and the team seems uh, nary a, uh, 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 concerned about at all. There's no concern whatsoever. There's no acknowledgement to the stock price. As a matter of fact, I think there's probably closed doors, and this is my premonition, that there are probably closed door sessions to suggest that Thomas Healy doesn't give two shits about the stock price now at all. And I believe that to be true. Um, he's alluded to this on a few interviews in that the stock price is what it is and it's going to do what it's going to do and and failing to acknowledge um, his uh, responsibility to share owners to drive shareholder value. Now, the, the staunch disconnect and the cross comparison between this $40 million company uh, and Hylion that sits at what, $400 million, $350 million. The market cap continues to digress uh, so quickly that I think they're worth almost less than cash, and, and rightfully so. Again, they, they don't want to defend their position. But in contrast, the interview that I saw between uh, the CEO of Aduro and Mena Bechet, who's their uh, CIO, um, I counted the number of times that they talked about how important it was for shareholders to hang in there along the journey. Now, mind you, this is a comp company year over year that's up 75%, uh, not down 90% since coming to public markets. I mean, I don't even know where Hylion is now. I mean, they only give it credit from the $10 SPAC price, which was obviously an inflated um, scam 
uh, in and of itself to come to public markets under such fal false pretenses. But if I was going to be fair, I would say that it's lost 85% of its value. So while Aduro is up 75% and still continues to foot stomp the importance of driving shareholder value as a $40 million company, you ironically have Hylion, which I have listened intently to every quarterly call for the last three years. And I have heard one time in an interview uh, by Cheddar, uh, of all things, um, at the New York Stock Exchange, where Thomas Healy quickly alluded to shareholders and driving sh and driving value for shareholders. I think that was the comment. And it's the only time that I've heard in three years this CEO talk about um, this short shareholder value shareholder uh, community. Now, does the share owner group deserve that type of 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 blow off? I would suggest that the Hylion community is probably the strongest community that I've ever seen uh, amongst retail investors in that we all share in the same sentiment. We believe in this. We believe in the company um, so far as to believe that the company will eventually turn around and that if it is destined to go into oblivion, that we will all uh, fall into oblivion with this company. If there's a reserve, uh, reverse stock split in our future, we will take it into reverse stock split. I'm speaking for myself now, not the rest of you guys. You're all entitled to do your own uh, action when it comes to your own money and your own conviction about what you see in due diligence with this company. Me, I'm in it for the long haul. When this company eventually gets to where I want it, um, I, I will probably keep the company in the shares long term anyway. Okay. So here on the low end doesn't mean a whole lot to me it, 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 outside of the fact that I'm looking at it as a continued buy opportunity. But I find it interesting to compare and contrast. Uh, people, of course, um, I get all kinds of scrutiny by these videos and good on me for continuing to put them out and talk about things that, um, I, I mean, if there was any criticism that I would offer on Twitter is that I think way too many people are fluffing Thomas Healy's ass. Um, I'm the only one that's critical of that. A lot of people would say I'm out of, out of line. I totally disagree with you. Um, look, it, it, Nelson Peltz has not made a name for himself uh, by fluffing that ass, okay? Nelson Peltz has made a point of, of engaging in proxy fights with companies that have failed to acknowledge that share owners own the company and where share owners should provide ample time in evolution of uh, acknowledging that time is the necessary ingredient for companies to um, mm. to realize their vision, uh, medium and long term. Uh, there is a breaking point there where the uh, the objectives and the tactics used uh, to roll out a specific message uh, fall on deaf ears and are futile in the eyes of the market. And it doesn't mean that those initial uh, uh, directives by the company are wrong. It just means that they have been uh, not received well by the market. And in this particular case, I think Hylion should garner some scrutiny. Okay, um, I'm an advocate for the company, first and foremost. But as we evolve and we get to a place here of some level of stability, which we are not in, we are not in stable times right now. We are in absolutely volatile times. And I, I put on the table... Um, more prevalent than ever, the uh, sheer possibility that this company could end up in less than 10 cents a share. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there and suggest that based on the action of the company and the lack of sense of urgency, I think this company could go down to zero. Uh, let's just start there for the baseline. How many of you devote highly on community members are willing to take this company from $1.56 where it sits now to zero? Let's just talk about zero because we know that a company cannot be worth a negative integer, integer okay? So it doesn't do me any good to suggest that Hylion will be worth um, negative $1.56 or negative $5 or negative $10, okay? That's impossible, all right? Uh, in other words, for every negative integer to the, to the other side of zero, uh, we would actually have to send Hylion Holdings a check every month uh, for having the uh, luxury of owning the shares, okay? So let's just start at zero because that's inevitably where we are heading is zero. 
Um, how many of you guys can maintain your bullish thesis on the company at zero? Okay. Going to zero. Oh, Ryan, we have $400 million. Of it doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean shit. Oh, yeah, we have a great CEO who's still, he's been there since the beginning. Doesn't mean shit. We have patent protection over the products. Um, all of the technology um, doesn't mean anything. Uh, we have a continued uh, performance from our stock analysts that cover the company, Mark Delaney, uh, Stephen Fisher, um, who are showcased on the Hylion.com website. And I can nary a find a nod in the investor community. I'd like you guys to keep your eyes peeled at the ACT Expo coming up because there will be independent investor shirt walking around um, by one of my colleagues who is going to uh, utilize his right um, as a paid patron uh, of the ACT Expo uh, to gain some insights from whoever Thomas Healy has in way of the team there. Hopefully it's Thomas Healy himself uh, and can garner some insights there. Um, but certainly we want to make sure and support Goldman Sachs in the continual downgrading uh, and continual uh, reaffirmation of what should be uh, in the best interest of share owners right now to, sh to sell the stock at $1.56. So in accordance with Goldman Sachs and their thesis, uh, irrespective of the fact that they own a massive share position in Hylion, um, they're calling for the company to go uh, lower. Now, because if you sell the company at $1.59, then they would suggest that that is absolutely a conviction move in accordance with their stock analysis and thesis on the company is that there is zero upside potential, only downside potential. And to my uh, to my bracketing of that potential goes all the way to zero. OK, uh, so zero to $1.59, Goldman Sachs says sell. Uh, if you want to understand more about those analysts, you can kick over to Hylion.com. They seem perfectly happy with showcasing those um, those analysts that are continually wanting to downgrade the stock. I think something is awry here. Uh, I think something smells like absolute neon green dog shit. Uh, and, and that's my presumption. I think that there's backdoor deals going on right now. Again, I allude to the imperfect market. Um, that we are stuck having to play in right now. And I will play indefinitely. I am calm, cool, and collected about this particular uh, position. I have no problem with adding continued shares right now. I bought 500 more shares this week at $1.56, $1.55. I actually got the receipt. I thought I picked it up at $1.56, um, but just received the trade confirmation and it was $1.55. Um, where that company could materialize. Do I think Hylion is worth 5 or $6 from a stable perspective now? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, we're representing almost a 300% increase from these levels here just to get us up to a stable amount. And I think one small catalyst with regard to the pressure that's building behind the dam with this company currently with the con continued retraction of the stock price, just imagine Hylion and... Uh, I'll be. I'll have some fun with it. Uh, is compressing a neon green spring. Uh, eventually, the compression of a string of a spring ultimately stops compressing, and it just continues to incur pressure. We have been compressed for a long, long time. Now, in my assessment, in defining for shareholders what could be the ultimate range of play here for Hylion. Um, I want to reemphasize here that Hylion seems perfectly fine with the company going to zero as far as the stock price. Um, so I'm preparing for that end. And I will buy the company all the way down to one or three cents. I have no problem with that. I have plenty of idle cash. My investments are, are perfectly fine. Um, I'm making really, really good money with the business. For me, it makes total sense uh, to continue to uh, uh, supplement and infuse my due diligence with regard to my position. And right now, what's materializing for you guys, if you want to understand a piece of my perspective, in that I'm not losing my shorts on, you know, continually investing in a company that I feel is going to zero. I don't. It's the contrary. Okay. But my job is to have a little bit of fun here and deliberate around this neon green monster that we have here. We're going to revolve around the neon green monster and talk about uh, all foreseeable outcomes. And I'm buying into what I think Hylion is perfectly comfortable with. 
um, there's some tweets of some bearish followers and some of the trolls as well as Hylian. I got a little crap for uh, liking one of the trolls comments. I, I have no problem with that. I, if I agree with the criticism, um, as trolly as it might be, I'm going to agree with the comment. And I, I think it's cool. Um, and they go back and forth. It's fun to watch that banter between switch hitter and uh, Shekdees or something like that. I think it's fun to watch the banter. Um, I'm, I'm sure in, per, in person, they're probably both pretty good people. I'd have a drink with them. I have no problem. Well, because somebody doesn't like Hylion or has been hurt by Hylion in way of entering into a share position based on the information that was released that has inevitably been proven futile and false is somehow pissed off about it. And I'm supposed to like somehow not like this individual. I, I don't, I don't look at things like that guys. And you'd be surprised at how I keep business in a box. I keep business in a box. Um, uh, this week I did reach out to the SEC. I called them this time and I reaffirmed that I have my reports on file with them in the tune of three. And I do. Um, and I called them directly and I got a call back on them and I will not disclose the particulars of that phone call. Uh, on social media, I will not. But if you think for a second that I'm lying about calling and getting a return call from the SEC, you underestimate me. And you might think, wow, Ryan, you know, what does that mean? I mean, are you less bullish about the company? No, not at all. Not at all. I am very, very uh, specifically critical about the stock market and the imperfections that exist within the stock market. And I do believe that there is some level of culpability and responsibility on behalf of Hylion Holdings to provide as transparent of information as they had at the time. And at the time that that information was released, they knew full well that they did not have a product that by nature of what we are looking at now in the market has taken them up till now and we still don't have certification on the product. So how could you forecast the number of sales during a monumental year that was supposed to be 2023 as garnering thousands of sales when 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 what has transpired in reality is such that our final product is still not certified to date? Now, was the disconnect between the supply chain issues and whatever else? You know, maybe the bullish thesis has changed, so therefore we don't have to be bullish on the company anymore. We've already received our SPAC funding. Now we can just sit on our haunches and, and enjoy this big infusion of money. You know, um, the people who are bringing into the company right now and where the board of directors, we're just giving away shares anyway, right? Who cares? The only people who are hurt are retail investors, um, that of which I represent retail investors. I don't represent institutional investors. My sympathy goes very little for them. They're not investing their own money like institutions are. We are. And I should be commended for my efforts for coming on and deploying an institutional mentality with regard to a retail position in the stock. I want you to think about that, okay? If you're going to buy into traditional means of owning highly on holdings, you'll lose. You'll lose. And I've provided throughout the insights of covering highly on this entire time, as brutal as it's been, um, it's been horrible. It's going to be a lot of fun to cover the company when it's fun to cover the company. Right now, it's not fun at all. It's not fun at all. And I, I share, and a lot of people might think that the coverage of the company is based on a position of desperation and that I have to do this. Oh, you're sorely mistaken. I will continue to cover the company when it's conducive to do so. What, what's interesting is I'm provided top cover and understanding that YouTube and influencing stock price is quite obvious, quite obvious that it is impossible to generate churn on YouTube to affect the stock price of a company. It's impossible. Okay. So I have a catalog of content on YouTube that proves that as consistent as my message has been, has done nothing done nothing in way of generating churn, if not the opposite, in driving the share price down to its anemic uh, level that it's at right now at $1.59. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Uh, it actually gives me the freedom and flexibility on the upside to continue to cover highly on holdings without garnering any type of attention. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I have years of catalog of, of, of proving how futile those efforts uh, will be. Uh, when the company goes up, it will still be the same mentality and understanding that um, whatever I do on social media has zero 
zero effect whatsoever on the stock price itself, rather the uh, very intent of the message, and that is to educate people on the opportunity uh, that yes, in this particular case, it's been driven to oblivion and in a lot of a lot of capacities out of a lot of people's psyche in that I think a lot of people, when they sell a stock, they just want to forget about it. I think in due time, Hylion, once they start to get their feet under them and start to materialize on orders, I think it's going to be a, a rude awakening for a lot of people who have moved away from the independent investor channel altogether. This is great too. It's exactly where I want to be. Um, I'm more comfortable actually uh, proving to people through action uh, rather than just talking myself to hype. If you want talk hype, uh, go listen to Jeremy with financial education, okay? There's a lot of those clowns on YouTube who do a lot of talk and a lot less action, okay? Um, I will prove this out. And when it does start to gain some momentum, the independent investor channel will explode uh, as I calmly expect it to be. And I will sit calmly across from a YouTube audience um, and remind you that I told you so. And that'll be fine. And that'll piss a lot of people off. Uh, it'll make a lot of people happy because it will fortify for a lot of people what it is that we see now. We have the ability to judge a company based on the future projections and not necessarily what we're caught in now in the minutia of a very, very non-conducive stock market uh, to companies like this that are uh, pre-stage commercialization, I would say. Not pre-revenue, they're earning some money, but um, I'm not interested in all at all anymore in the EX hybrid. They've proven um, many, many times over that the initial projections, even for the EX hybrid, were um, a, a, a guess that they pulled out of their asshole um, and put on paper uh, for people to make investments decisions on. And it was a ball place lie. It was a lie based on what data, if any data, some data, I don't know. Um, it was a lie. Uh, it defined lie for me. <laughs> Something that was put out there with the intention to deceive is worse than a lie, actually. Uh, a white lie is something to suggest that I did not take the cookie from the cookie jar when in fact I did, where the implication is rather light in that there's one less cookie in the cookie jar. But as far as the implication here for putting out information with the intention to deceive, do I think they had an intent to deceive? No. Was that the unintended consequence of putting out that information? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The unintended consequence of putting out that information to call for so many EX hybrid sales at the time when those projections were out, and they didn't even have the new version of the hybrid when they put those projections out, have materialized into, very, into something very, very little, very little. I'm not sure where the strategic focus of Hylion is. We haven't talked about the Hypertruck ERX. Uh, for quite some time. We've talked about the Carnot generator and how cool their heat exchanger is and um, how some of the 3D renderings are coming through. Look, that's great. I mean, they've got a $90 million to blow on this uh, Carnot dream. Um, that's fine. Uh, I didn't sign up for Carnot. Uh, I think Carnot could be a good money maker down the line. Uh, I signed up for the Hypertruck ERX actually being more commercially ready than it was when I initially signed up for this. So right now we are holding on to a dream of them uh, actually getting through certification, which has been going on for months. Uh, uh, don't know how long it takes. I certify many, many platforms during a week's worth of work. So I'm not really sure what's taken so long. If they've run into hiccups, we would not be known. I mean, um, they don't showcase good news. They're sure as hell not going to showcase bad news, if there is any. Um, Thomas Healy said there has been no major hurdles in the winter testing and validation of the Hypertruck ERX. But, uh, you know, who are we to not have a bomb dropped on us and drive this stock down to 25 cents next week? It could happen anytime, guys. Um, and I'm, I'm perfectly uh, preparing for that to happen. Um, if I was going to play the game of the look at the stock and say, Ryan, you can't invest in the company based on the stock and play the stock game and completely ignore what it is that I know through my due diligence, well, then I would look at the stock game and say, quite simply, the stock is $1.56 now. Um, in three months, it's going to be at 50 cents. It's going to be at 25 cents. It's really simple. It's stupid. 
um, its horrible stock market application. And retail investors operate along those premises um, futilely and to an end that I will never be able to change. All I can say to you is this. In action, I bought 500 more this week at $1.55. I'll continue to buy it as it goes down. Um, if my share base is uh, uh, subjected to a reverse stock split, uh, so be it. So be it. Uh, will 20x on the uh, the the share uh, structure right now, which sits, I believe, at 170 million. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if there's been an offering since then, but 170 million in shares. So let's say we just 10x that. We go up over a billion shares of outstanding. Uh, company shares that are, I mean, even more worthless than they are now. Um, and we all own, you know, uh, uh, 20 times less of, of the stock. I'm perfectly, I'm prepared to do that. I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun now. I'm having fun with this ride. Um, I like being on roller coasters that go down really fast. And um, I just imagine that I'm on a neon green roller coaster with this on the emblem. I'm right here on the front of the roller coaster. And I'm sitting uh, uh, forward right cockpit um, with my hands in the air, uh, enjoying the ride. And and it's awesome. I mean, uh, Thomas Healy's the CEO. I'm a third party uh, uh, observer to this. And so I'm watching the grand raping going on on the short sellers. So you got the short sellers over here. Um, with their with their gang rape going on over here. Um, you've got Thomas Healy, uh, um, our paper champion, uh, forward and center, um, that doesn't think there's any type of an emergency at all. So if he doesn't think there's an emergency, neither do I. Um, we see the, the new board of directors that um, are so busy in their day-to-day -day operations. Now they've been awarded um, thousands and thousands of shares in this company. I mean, it, I guess it would be too much to expect that... Uh, uh, share owners are thrown a bone in understanding a little bit more about each of our new respective board mem members who are going to execute along a strategic vision and take us to the promised land into the future. But we've heard an area uh, uh, of a comment in way of one word from each of those three. And why would we expect to have any type of clarity on what they bring to the table? Why would we expect anything less? Um, so I'm sitting back, I'm watching the institutions and Thomas Healy and as well as myself lose a fortune uh, on the company. And and all the while, the company is taking a, a silence on the line approach. Uh, and, and, and I've come to a place where my focus outside of this highly on video, uh, every 60 minutes, every single week that I do, um, is the only time that I focus on the company. There's a hundred other projects that I'm focused on right now. And quite, quite frankly, it's it's organically feels good to focus on those companies that actually appreciate my time, because the only people who appreciate this every week are the very subscribers and patrons of the message. And for you guys, I thank you. I'm glad you find value in it. I'm glad you appreciate the view that I put on this. Um, uh, I'm not one way bullish. Um, I'm I try to deliver as neutral of a perspective as I can. And sometimes that involves going to the left and providing scrutiny on a company that I believe should not be immune to scrutiny at this particular juncture. When they start to prove out that they can provide transparent information to a retail community that is that is more loyal to them than they are to it, then I will retract. Uh, when they actually start to turn out results in line with what they promised to the uh, public markets, when they came to public markets, as opposed to doing the complete opposite, then I will retract. When I see more transparency in day-to-day -day operations and more reciprocation from the head guy in driving shareholder value, then I will retract. And I will cover this company in a way that will be more fun to cover the company. Do you guys think I enjoy doing this? Do you think I get satisfaction at a coming on and bagging on a company that is my number one holding in my portfolio? Do you think I enjoy doing that? If you think I enjoy doing that, then you're probably buying into that whole robotic application of social media where you can just come on and bag on to some somebody and not appreciate the human element of what I am trying to do. And that is to generate a little bit of fire, a little bit of uh, stopping what I see as a slippery slope. Um, I mentioned in this video for the first time of ever covering Hylion that this thing could inevitably go to zero.
Uh, I, rev I, re I mentioned for the first time in this video the potential of reverse stock split. Um, I, I mentioned for the first time in this video the possibility that Hylion actually goes into a negative value, albeit I've never seen that in nature. Uh, but hey, everything is uh, on the table with uh, concerns about a company that is on a slippery slope that does nothing but go down every day. I expect to wake up every single day and check the stock price and it goes down. I expect it every single day. And that's what happens. Um, they are absolutely delivering 100% on that on that goal. If it was a goal to drive the stock pr price down, which I wouldn't rule anything out at this point, I wouldn't rule out manipulation. I wouldn't rule out any any type of potential for the backdoor deals that are going on for the benefit of the few at the expense of many, because that imperfection in the stock market is something that I look as an independent investor to shed light on through my message in understanding that, look, if we're going down, we're going down with the institutions. If we're going down, we're going down with what was the youngest billionaire in the history of the world uh, and will absolutely be a laughing stock. Uh, in the investor community and will go down in the history of business lore as being one of the biggest failures uh, of of the 20th century. I mean, this is th this is shaping up to be an epic failure of proportions beyond any level of imagination. And where the few thousand dollars I lose, um, I, I, every day that goes down, I laugh at the fact that if he feels like the best thing to do is go silent on the line um, and do interviews with people that it, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. It does not garner the level of attention and 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 advocate for RNG as a political advocate. If that's what he thinks is the best to do right now in the company, so be it. Uh, I'm I'm way past it. I have been for a long, long time. I'm mechanically buying shares now, uh, as I feel like inevitably we will talk and be talking about a different company. Um, in, in a few short months when we start to get a little bit, a bit of break free uh, of the company. Those grumblings are probably happening behind the scenes. Those progresses are probably being made. They're probably being form formalized. But when was the last order that we received? DSV was the last order. That was many months ago. That was an order of 10. Um, we're in a phase right now where maybe garnering orders isn't in the best interest of the company for uh, the, the sheer fact that they can't uh, fill orders right now. Perhaps maybe it's just ill-timed, right? Uh, in in our ability to uh, to fill orders now, and and perhaps maybe we're just evaluating the company in a soft spot in time of the company, uh, and and I'd like to see more fight from the company rather than just a a a buy into or and or a just a, a rollover. Um, and 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 let the rapists rape them from the back and, and let the uh, stock market run over their skulls uh, from the front front without showing any type of, of of fight. And that's the disconnect between what I see in other companies in way of fight and really trying to pay their story forward and really solidify their spot in an industry that by nature of what they say, they have a spot in that industry. Uh, but as of late, I've seen very little, if any, fight whatsoever. Uh, from from highly on holdings and uh, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in for the weekly I know this was a little bit more to the negative side that's totally fine um, hate me love me so unsubscribe from me that seems to be uh, a pretty awesome uh, uh, habit for people they'll regret it they'll regret it I wish I could block those people who have unsubscribed from the channel because I think you get one shot with me um, you you find that you want to be wishy-washy with me and unsubscribe and, oh, when Ryan actually does something right on YouTube, I'm going to subscribe to the channel. I'm the same fella no matter what. And when you're subscribed to me, you're subscribed to my unique, in-depth, uh, unabated, um, uninfluenced perspective on a company at current juncture. Okay, and I want nothing more than to report out on the success of this company. We are not in that time right now, and I will report out based on the lens that I see and the perspective that I see in today's current environment. Leave your comments at the bottom. Subscribe to the channel. Hell, unsubscribe from the message for all I care it means nothing to me, but we will continue to foot stomp this message inevitably as long as I'm breathing and as long as this is working and as long as this is working, we will continue to push forward this message with steadfast commitment and hope to supplement what I feel is somewhat lackadaisical commitment to their shareholders on behalf of Highly on Holdings. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.